In this video, I'm gonna give you guys 10 tips and tricks that can help you to improve your gameplay and become a pro player in Free Fire. The first tip that I'm gonna tell you guys is regarding shotguns and SMGs. If you're a SMG user and you're going up against a shotgun user, try to maintain distance with your enemy. Most of the time, when we try to do drag headshots in short range with SMG guns, the aim gets stuck in the enemy's body because of the default aim. So it can be hard to headshot an enemy using SMGs in close range. Shotguns on the other hand can do a lot of damage to the enemy when the enemy is very close to them. SMG drag headshots work a lot better when you're a bit away from your enemy. Now if you are a SMG user, I recommend you to maintain some distance when attacking shotgun users. Now if you are a shotgun user and you are going up against a SMG user, I recommend you to get closer to the enemy. Shotguns like the M1014 has a very low level of range, so you will need to get closer to the enemy. Shotguns also do less damage to the enemy when you are far away from them. So if you are a shotgun user, try to get closer to the enemy. The second tip that I want to tell you guys is to choose a good character combination according to the mode that you are playing. In Free Fire, there are many types of characters and these characters have different different types of abilities. There are some characters that are very useful in some modes and there are some characters that aren't that useful in some modes. For example, the Misha character isn't that useful in Clash God matches because you can't drive vehicles in Clash God matches. But in the Battle Royale mode, the Misha character can be very useful. So when choosing your character combination, try to choose a good character combination according to the mode that you're playing. Choosing a character combination according to your playing style can also be very useful. I have already uploaded two separate videos on some of the best character combinations for Battle Royale matches and some of the best character combinations for Clash God matches. I highly recommend you guys to check out those two videos after watching this video. The third tip that I want to tell you guys is regarding the glue wall and grenade slots. If your grenade slot setting is in single slot, all the grenades, glue walls, flashbangs, etc. will be on a single slot. Now the problem here is for example, let's say that in the slot the grenade icon is showing. So if you need to choose a glue wall, you will need to press on that button and choose the glue wall or else you can also keep tapping on it until you find the glue wall. Now if you engage in a short range fight with an enemy, most of the time you will need to quickly put a glue wall. Now by the time you choose the glue wall, an enemy could easily do a lot of damage to you. So a great solution to this problem is to have a separate button for glue walls and a separate button for grenades. To do this, go to the grenade slot setting and select the double slot setting. This way, you will get a separate slot for glue walls and a separate slot for other throwables such as grenades, flashbangs and etc. Here's how I have placed those two buttons on my custom HUD. Now since the two buttons are separated, I can select glue walls much fast. So guys, now let's move on to tip number 4. Now a mistake that I see many beginners do is that as soon as they see an enemy in long range, they quickly attack that enemy. Before attacking enemies, it's very important to see and understand things such as the situation that you are in, the location of the enemy, is the zone getting near you and etc. For example, let's say that an enemy is in long range and the zone is shrinking and coming closer. Let's say you get into a fight with that enemy and the enemy does a lot of damage to you. If you are now outside the safe zone, you could also lose a lot more health from being outside the safe zone. Now if the zone is much stronger and it does a lot of damage to you, most of the time you will get eliminated outside the safe zone. So at such times, it's better to ignore the enemy and quickly get to the safe zone. Even if the enemy sees you and attacks you, try to defend yourself with glue walls and try to get to the zone first. If you get to the safe zone before the enemy, you could attack the enemy while he's outside the safe zone. The fifth tip that I wanna tell you guys is to learn from your mistakes. Most of the time, we do some mistakes in matches that cause us to get defeated by the enemy. Even when players keep losing one match after the other, they still won't identify and fix their mistakes. A great way to identify your mistakes is by using the replay option in the game. If you have turned it on, after a match, you can go back to the replay option and watch your last game. By watching it, you can identify the mistakes that you did and you can fix them and get better than before. So try to identify and fix your mistakes. So guys, now let's move on to tip number 6. Most of the time when we run straight like this, we can become an easy target for a sniper user. That's because when we run in a straight pattern, a sniper user can aim and do a headshot on you. So instead of just running straight, try to add a few jumps while you're running. This way, it will be much harder for a sniper user to aim for a headshot. The seventh tip that I wanna tell you guys is regarding attachments. Many players ignore important attachments when they're playing. When using most guns without attachments, they don't usually perform that well. Most of the time, they do a lot of recoil. But when we put the attachments to the guns, they perform very well. There are many different attachments that you can add to different types of guns. These attachments help to improve the gun in many different ways. For example, when we use a level 3 muscle, there's a large increase in range. When we use a level 3 foregrip, there's a large recoil reduction. When we use upgrade chips, they can upgrade a regular weapon into its ultimate version. So now I think you guys can understand how important attachments are. So instead of ignoring attachments in matches, try to put them into your guns. The 8th tip that I want to talk about is regarding footsteps. Some players usually turn their volumes very low or they play in very noisy places. When they do this, it's hard to hear the enemy's footsteps. When an enemy is coming closer to you, most of the time you can hear their footsteps. But if you put the volume very low or you play in a very noisy place, it will be hard to hear when an enemy comes near you. So those enemies might easily attack you when they get close to you. So when playing, try to increase your volume a bit more so that you can hear them. If you're playing in a noisy place, try to wear a headphone or an earphone so that you can hear the enemy's footsteps well. The ninth tip that I wanna tell you guys is to improve your 
your reflexes when playing it's very important to have quick reflexes most pro players have quick reflexes so if a beginner goes against them it can be hard for the beginner to defeat the pro player one good way to improve your reflexes is by playing unlimited demo custom room matches in unlimited demo custom room matches you can use unlimited amounts of glue walls since you get unlimited glue walls try to rush the enemy unlimited demo custom rooms are usually very fast paced because players play rush when they are playing them so when you play more and more unlimited demo custom room matches you can improve your reflexes the 10th tip that i want to tell you guys is regarding zip lines as you guys might know when we jump down from a zip line we usually have the item in our hand that we had before we used the zip line for example if i had a melee weapon in my hand before i used the zip line i'll usually have the melee weapon in my hand when i jump down from the zip line now for example let's say that an enemy is firing at us when we are going through the zip line now if we jump down from the zip line while having a melee weapon in our hand it will take us a bit of time to select and put a glue wall to defend ourselves that small time could be enough for the enemy to do a lot of damage to us so try to have a glue wall in your hand before using the zip line when we jump down from the zip line we won't need to select the glue wall because we already had it in our hand so when we jump down we can quickly place the glue wall to defend ourselves so before using a zip line try to have a glue wall in your hand if you guys want more tips and tricks check out this video in here i talk about a lot more tips and tricks that can help you to improve your gameplay and become a pro player in free fire